Then when the job at Mary Washington opened up in 1983, uh, I was aware of which universities and colleges were around here. And they needed a photographer and a printmaker, which I'd had plenty of experience in. Uh, it wasn't my main field, but um, I took that job and had been there since, until 2008. In, I would say, shortly after graduate school, I, I decided to quit painting altogether. Uh, Madison, Wisconsin is in the middle of two huge lakes, the downtown area, and there's a lot of fishing and boating right in town, kind of. So I decided to go fishing and just kind of forget about painting. And um, that, led, that, that didn't last long, a couple of weeks maybe. And I started making these watercolors of fishing bobbers. The trouble with painting the realist paintings I was doing was, was that my ideas were running faster than the process. So uh, those, those early realist paintings were based on photographs I had taken of people's, uh, other people's houses, interiors and pets and different things, and I would combine them together. So they weren't just one particular photograph. But once I made the drawings and had the drawing on the canvas, I knew it was gonna be a matter of X number of hours. After a point, once I knew what the painting was going to look like, the sort of challenge was gone. So I began to work smaller, or I began to work in watercolor, and that didn't seem to be doing a lot either, so that's when I decided to go fishing. Looking at the fishing bobber, I, I, I was able to, I didn't at the time figure all this out, but uh, I was able to do abstract paintings, essentially. With, when you put a bobber in there, it becomes a realist painting. Uh, just fishing for a while and looking at what happens in the water, the reflection of the sky, and the, the changes, the color changes from one minute to the next, um, I was able to really loosen up and just kind of focus on the bobber as the main focal point. And, and almost anything would go with, as far as putting the water in. It would be believable. Uh, so that really kind of opened up the gate and I said, well, I can, I can go further with this and, and make the step into abstraction. Abstraction, I, I, think, I think most artists that may, maybe go from realism to abstraction do it. Um, you have to have a, a place you're going to go. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't happen. Uh, you have to have some kind of focus. And I think um, once I decided to do that, I thought back on, on the process and of drawing and where it all came from. And I remembered uh, there was a series on television that John Nagy used to have. And, and when I was growing up, I would, it was a 15 minute program. I looked forward to that every week. And he would start with circles and squares and cubes and end up with a horse. And I thought that would be a good place to start, kind of start over. And that's where I started doing the abstractions that have kind of almost floating objects, the cubes and the spheres and, and uh, a lot of texture and things. And it mostly work on paper. Part of that is just the technical skill that I had gained from painting realism. Um, I like the idea of that illusion. And, and in doing the abstraction, I kept some of that. Of course, the later paintings are much flatter than that, but um, that's where it kind of began. If, when, you, when you look at the whole show, the overview kind of makes some sense, but as I said, there are big gaps missing, really, that, that kind of uh, are experimental times when, when I try some things and kind of just hide them or throw them away. Um, and all along, uh, even though I began to paint abstractly, I was kind of uh, still interested in images. And the images that intrigued me were images from old textbooks. And that started, I think, when I found a textbook at a uh, uh, antique shop in Fredericksburg years and years ago that I actually, wasn't my textbook, but was one that I had in school. And the, the illustrations in it just popped out because I remember studying those and just looking at the, at the pictures in the book. Um, so I began to collect old textbooks with the idea that someday I'm going to take those, some of those images, those sort of 
illustrations and do something with them in painting. And then I began to notice more and more of the graffiti and uh, then again thought, well, I'll make some paintings that have that feeling. And these paintings, nobody ever saw. <laughs> and I said, well, why not just use the pages themselves? So I began to take the interesting pages and glue them down and, and then do a little bit of work over the top of it. So I, I sort of introduced my own doodling in there again but let all the information from these pages just come through. Uh, um, when I began to work abstractly, I was mostly working on paper for quite a few years and trying to work some ideas out. And, when, uh, and I was still doing photography all along. And when I went to these junk stores just to buy whatever, for some reason I picked up piano rolls, old paper piano rolls. I liked the paper itself. I thought, well, maybe I'll draw on it. But it had the little uh, holes and, and uh, different, sh actually, shapes in them. Um, so I, I, one day I was just experimenting in the studio and I had some old photo prints that I had made and, and one of these piano rolls was right there and I just took some paint and squeegeed it through. So I started doing some of that and then I really liked the idea of, of, a, of a stencil, yeah, where you make you can, you can build the painting by squeegeeing paint through something and repeat different shapes. Uh, so those paintings evolve from, from that idea and they're all titled after song titles. And that was a, a series that really, uh, it took me two or three, maybe four years to finish that one. And that, a lot of paintings I really liked, I liked that process and, and um, uh, uh, they were paintings that were sort of uh, accepted in a lot of shows and galleries and things so it fit you know in, in the sales part of that. Whenever you look at the show itself it covers realism to the early abstractions to all kinds of things. They, they're not done jumping from one to the other. There's usually some sort of a progression there and I think it's very common for artists to work in a series of some kind because um, you learn different things from the previous painting and all the ideas you have in that particular style or way of working can't be done in one painting. So um, uh, sometimes the series ends abruptly and sometimes it kind of just slides into a, another direction. Uh, you know, these I call strata a series and um, I think originally they were inspired by when you live on, a, on, on the river, you your perception is horizontal.